from soup to salad dressing, cereal, and soap. Barcodes are on almost every product we buy, and believe it or not, it was the railroads that pioneered the technology that streamlined our shopping experience. Looking at a rail yard, it hits you. There's a lot to keep track of here. There are cars of all different types going to different places. And of course, there are also customers wanting to know where their shipments are. Without any automation, that meant writing down a car's information by hand. Doing it this way was slow, and as we all know, human beings aren't perfect, so mistakes could happen. What the railroads needed was something that could reduce the possibility of human error. And remember, trains ship products around the country. That means rolling stock often travels on different railroads. So the system would need to be something that could be standardized and implemented on a large scale by multiple companies. This is what would ultimately be used, a colorful reflective barcode known as CarTrack. But before this, the first barcode was patented in 1952 by Norman J. Woodland and Bernard Silver. It looked nothing like car track and actually resembled a bullseye. It was intended for the supermarket industry. Of course, car track had a slightly different application. Its creator, David J. Collins, had spent time in college working on the Pennsylvania Railroad and understood the problems railroads faced. After school, he would go on to work for Sylvania. His car track system was originally tested on the Boston and Maine in the early 1960s. As a train passed, a trackside reader bounced white light off the tag and the reflection was interpreted by a sensor. The labels were read bottom to top and corresponded to the car's owner and its car number. A printout of the train's consist would be made after it passed. But CarTrack wasn't the only automatic equipment identification system in development at that time. Looking at US patents, one idea was to use magnets, while another concept used microwaves. In 1967, the Association of American Railroads selected four companies for field testing. The goal was to find one system that could be used across North America. Interestingly, Wabco advocated for a black and white barcode, while General Electric came up with a system that relied on radio frequency identification, or RFID, similar to the technology that's used on railroads today. But CarTrack ultimately won out. It was mandated that all interchange cars have the tags applied by 1970. The Pennsylvania Railroad started applying them a few years before that. In this Pensy newsletter from September 1967, you can see workers putting the tags on freight cars and a locomotive. And they fit right in with the fashion trends of the 60s. Unfortunately, car track had some problems. Trains operate in harsh environments, and the railroads were eventually faced with missing, dirty, or damaged labels that couldn't be read. Also, car track wasn't integrated into a networked computer system, and the railroads weren't actually required to buy the scanners or use the system. They just had to apply the tags. Car track was ultimately discontinued in 1977. As it was phased out, companies like Southern Pacific and Missouri Pacific worked with IBM to computerize car tracking, scheduling, and much more. And in the 1980s, Burlington Northern began testing a new system that used RFID tags to automatically gather a freight car's information. That system caught on, and today, rolling stock is tracked with automatic equipment identification, or AEI tags, like these. They house radio transponders that can be read by trackside equipment. Interchange cars were required to have these tags by the end of 1994. But CarTrack's legacy still lives on today. Most of the items you see on store shelves have barcodes with vertical lines that display a UPC or universal product code. It's unlikely, but you may occasionally see these colorful CarTrack barcodes on modern freight trains that are pulling older cars. But the best place to track down stuff like this is on preserved equipment. The tags in this video were found on cars at the Southeastern Railway Museum in Duluth, Georgia. Whether we're buying food at the grocery store or tracking a package, we use barcodes all the time. The technology that seemed like a failure in the 1970s eventually evolved into an overwhelming success that's changed our lives forever.